So this is my few minutes a day for peace because I don't accept going back to normal life and ignoring the fact that people are still dying every day in Syria and Iraq and Afghanistan and Libya and Yemen and uh, probably Sudan uh, and everywhere else where there is conflict because they are being armed, they are being financed into uh, insurgencies, uh, our military machines from our governments where taxes are paid to pay them to look after the dignity of their own people but instead they use those taxes to go off and murder on the other side of the world. Um, that is all still happening today. Whilst we live in peace and security on here, uh, other people are de being devastated and suffering. So I just want to reiterate that the way that ends is leaders of peace. So the way that ends is the law changes that make war illegal so that nations cannot aggress each other in order to steal another nation's country and resource benefit. Um, legally, there should be no rules of war. Every single act of mass murder should be illegal. <laughs> It's like so blatantly obvious. And when I saw uh, someone's post yesterday saying that um, the they loved Obama, I was sort of like, well, do you love the fact that he's mass murdering children on the other side of the world in Syria right now? Is that okay? And you, and you can still love him? How can we separate those realities? How can we separate uh, the existence of, of, of gross trauma that an individual is in charge of inflicting from the fact that we see them in popular culture as nice people, smile and wave, happy, happy, give me a vote, whilst I go and kill people on the other side of the world with drones and with fighter jets and with bombs and with insurgents on the ground and with, with boots on the ground, military force on the ground. Syria is an absolute devastation. Um, you know, the more and more I research what's happening there, I just can't believe that we accept um, this, this separation of reality uh, between for these leaders that walk around and, and stand in front of us and uh, look distinguished but are committing the grossest crimes in the history of the world so um, yeah leaders of peace I mean I mean it's such an extreme kind of suggestion but you've got uh, Gary Johnson in America um, and you've got uh, Jeremy Corbyn in the UK and whilst they're completely different ends of the political spectrum um, for me the 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 way a society runs, it's almost insignificant at the moment. What's more important is that we start by stopping the murder. And the, the leaders, at least, that we get are focused on peace and stability and security for all um, and trying to do it in an orderly way, trying to do their best, um, you know, and giving any system a chance that is peaceful. Uh, so it's kind of pro probably very funny to a few people for me to say Jeremy Corbyn and Gary Johnson, but... I don't really care, um, as long as it, there's an attempt to give dignity to all citizens, whatever political system that works within central government is just, you know, it's like a band-aid really, because it's not like central governments are ever going to efficiently deal with the, the people. Small scale, small scale management of people is what produces the best outcome of people. Small scale healthcare, small scale education, small, even the UN did a study on the future of food and it was... Um, small scale organic farming that was sustainable sustainable future of food not mass scale corporate farming it's uh, our quality of life is about micro micro leadership and localization and decentralization and all that sort of thing so I'm not a fan of central governments but whilst we have them we should be doing everything we can to vote for leaders of peace any leader that is talking of violence, any leader that is investing in nuclear weapons. I mean, what is wrong with these people? It's like, if you build for billions of dollars, UK $205 billion, I think the US has spent a trillion or something on upgrading their nuclear weapons system. That is the intention to mass murder millions of people. That's not just the intention, that's the attempt to do it by creating the tool to do it. And at some stage, someone's going to use it. And the fact that we have leaders that are progressing, literally the destruction of the planet, by investing billions of dollars in, 
in these future weapons of death instead of helping to ensure that their uh, citizens have peace and security and an intention of peace and for the future and uh, dignity and opportunity and money and healthcare and education and all that sort of stuff. It just blows my mind that we let these mentally uh, not correct people continue to invest um, in a future of war and death. War should be illegal. There are children everywhere being murdered and suffering. It's not our world. We borrow it, then we leave. Right now, it's the children's world. And the the children, are, are when I see what's happening in Calais, even in France, 600 children who have uh, barely anything to eat. Their cafe was closed down. So um, they don't have... Th these are children without parents. They're there in need of love and support and education and hope and opportunity they are the future of the world and we have left them in squalor and and um, without hope and uh, the fact that that's happening in france but it's no surprise is it because when you look around france there's so many homeless there's so many people losing losing jobs it's uh, we do not have leaders who care about people we have leaders of violence and we don't have leaders who care about people so that's my uh, that's my speech for today we we honestly i mean it's not happening there's not like riots in the streets or there's not um marches in the streets asking for peace there's not people who are trying to change the law to make war illegal not really a few sort of fringe groups but so i constantly think how is that going to change how is it going to be become the mainstream rhetoric to stop the violence and to stop planning this this leader of future death and destruction um, and for the International Criminal Court to use their mandate to immediately stop the death in Syria and stop this grand theft of a nation state um, by a, a bunch of allied states that seized on the on the civil conflict of, as an opportunity to take the country or more, more likely probably instigated the civil conflict as an opportunity to take the country um, because it's like a domino game they're doing one country after the other so um, I mean that's my message ramble ramble uh, we're not really doing anything to stop the wars. We're not doing anything to create a future of peace. And my concern now is that um, if we if we don't do that at some stage, um, well, it already is affecting us with terror attacks, but if we don't do that at some stage, we could find ourselves affected by war as well. And I'm not saying that in a selfish way. Um, I just think that we need to be fighting for peace. So that's my blah today. Cheers.